Hello everybody and welcome to Against the Fence. This is the place to be if you're obsessed with the UFC. And today we're going to be talking to a very special fighter. Yes, that is Modestus Bukowskis, the Baltic Gladiator. Now, we met him before, haven't we? Yeah, we did. We met him at his last Cage Warriors event um, where he defended the belt. We got a picture with him, and since then, we've, we've decided to hit him up and get him on the channel for you guys. Absolutely. I hope you enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, it's like, it's time-wise, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll start with the UFC 264 card. Uh, I presume you watched it, right? Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then we'll go into a bit more about you, to be honest, because our, yeah. our community, they'll love to know more a bit about you on the, a personal level as well. Just questions past, present and future, getting into the sport, you know, what things look like now and what's coming up, basically. Awesome. And at the end, we've got a nice little game as well. Oh, Hopefully we've got, um, got time to, to do that with you. Yeah. Do you want to know the game or do you like surprises? Go on. Surprise me later. Uh, surprise oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll surprise him later. We'll, surprise we'll do it. We'll okay. give it later. Good, yeah. it's, it's fun as well. Were you impressed by Connor's adjustments in this fight at UFC 264? And if he did get into round two, do you think he would have seen more success and finished Poirier in number two, maybe? I think the adjustments he made, clearly he was a lot more focused. Um, he was a lot more sort of old Connor in terms of the way in his approach to the game. Uh, he didn't show too much on social media. Mm. Uh like obviously, I think he he probably had his whole team down with him. Uh, I don't know exactly where he was training. I think it was Abu Dhabi. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, I do feel though, although he made the adjust, he looked very good in the early stages. He he looked a lot more like you know like what he was doing before, you know, spinning back kicks, yeah. uh, psych kicks. But in my personal opinion, I think his ego had a bit of it, a, a bit of to play with. Uh, uh, to, or sorry, to, to, took a bit of a, a part in his decision to throw so many leg kicks. Yeah, because he 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 got kicked so many times to the leg, and that's what all, all, uh, you know inevitably caused his demise in the in the yeah. in the first fight. But wanted to pay Pori back, and with that being said, you know with all the sort of trash talk and stuff like that, if you look at who probably won the mind games, it's probably more Poirier than McGregor in terms of the fact that, you know, Poirier hit so many low kicks in the first fight. It was his, this was his chance. Now I was like, oh, I'm going to show you, I'm going to fuck you up with low kicks yeah, now. Do yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And I, I'm just looking at it from a fighter's perspective, obviously from being competitive and stuff like that. Obviously you want to, you want to sort of pay him back, but then that might've been playing on his mind. But this is the other little, little thing or little caveat to, to, you know, it going to the second round, his leg would have been already compromised in the second mm. round. I when I watched it back, I watched it back about two or three times, yeah, and I think he injured, he first injured his leg, yeah, when he, he got he got one of his low kicks checked. Now, listen, yeah, I've me. had that happen. Yeah. I'm, I was lucky. I didn't actually hit too crazy hard. I was just trying to target. Right, right. But, oh, my, you're hitting that, like, full whack. Like, imagine your intensity. Like, oh, I've got to get him back with low kicks, and then you smack him, and you're... Oof, it's not a, oh mate it's not a good day like I remember my leg already did swell up in when one of my fights where I did you know get a low kick check so I can't imagine how it was when I actually hit in full pack and then it went into an exchange with boxing where he seemed a little bit a little bit shaky to me which then you know they went into the clinch now how often do you see McGregor go uh, jump for guillotines yeah probably it was a desperation ever. move yeah wasn't I, it? I think already compromised at that point mm. when he was in right, that's point yeah and, and it's like okay if i go for the guillotine if it works i'll win the fight and i'll win by submission even though i told everyone you're a bitch if you win by submission yeah i'm watching it i remember i remember saying to these boys i said i think he's going to flip dustin over the top of him and then use it to get back up but then he just started to kind of try and readjust Cement it. And it yeah. was like, oh, I don't know if he's he able to get this. So, yeah. So, so you uh, think he uh, did that because he, his leg was pieced up at yeah. that point? It's, that's I was literally talking with that to my dad. And it seemed like, I know they, they showed other um, highlights or videos of where he front kick and it, that even got blocked with, a, mm, with elbow, an elbow. Yeah. I think because... Look, one check isn't going to cause enough or one uh, block isn't cause enough for the bone to break. But I'm thinking, imagine, he got it checked, his leg was already hurt, yeah. and then put it back up again. And again, th th this goes on to the point that you were saying about um, 
about obviously, oh, why didn't he use the, the the guillotine to try and get back up to his feet? Conor McGregor is amazing at getting back to his feet. Mm. He he's a very anti wrestler. Yeah? yeah, that's been his his main thing in and even in the first fight with Poirier he got straight back up to his feet there was absolutely no issues when he got taken down mm-hmm. so you know, for this fight for him to stay on the floor is a sign that probably his leg was 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 not in a good way because mm-hmm. otherwise you know uh, pop back up to his feet and it would have been all right yeah. he might have been trying to time with his foot being injured and then uh when he got back you know and then Poirier asked him to come back to his feet and then uh, obviously the front kick landed on the on the on the elbow and uh, I think that's probably what then, you know, le- led to the, the actual break, you know, because you had a, a hard check mm. and then another hard block. I mean, if you've ever kicked someone to the elbow before, mate, it is probably one of the worst things. Your leg will blow up for days. And yeah. even like a little crack from earlier and then another little crack there and then the, the foot back. I mean, even when I saw he, st- he threw the punches, his leg looked a little bit unstable. So, yeah, realistically... Second round would have been bad for 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 uh, McGregor, anyways. Um, and you know, you, I think it was a good fight. Um, but you got to give credit to Poirier for staying calm, for checking those attacks. But again, you have to think that maybe he knew that was coming. This right, is why right. I say the mind probably went in Poirier's favor because he knew McGregor wanted to get him back with those low kicks. So. Uh, yeah, I, I give a lot of credit to, to Poirier for, for staying calm and composed and mm-hmm. getting the job done and still being respectful after the mm. fight. Uh, you know, McGregor did look much better in this fight for sure until that moment, obviously. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I have, to, I have to agree on that as well. But but I, I think like, um, you know, that the, 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 the leg kick and how funny is this, right? In the second round, in the second fight they had, you know, the legs were the problem. You know, he's getting pieced up by Poirier. But McGregor just gone and pieced up himself in, in the third time. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> how crazy is that? Do you know what's so ironic as well? He says, I'm going to put you out on a... You're going to leave out here on a stretcher. <gasps> and ironic, he's then the one that's getting put out on the stretcher. So I mean, it's just bad this MMA game. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just such a such a volatile crazy you know you don't know what's going to happen and then this is uh like 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 i said this is why it's even hard to bet on mma fights just because you you don't know what could happen one shot could land or the favorite may you know it's 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 such a crazy sport Mm. but this is why you got but we love it yeah this is it we've got a question actually as well from um our our friend ash now you know him because you you guys would have spoke on twitter and and sort of arranging this and and everything for today he can't make it with us unfortunately but he did have a question for you about the ufc 264 card he wanted to know um and i guess we'll we'll play that clip as well actually what's up modestus hope you're good um i'm sorry i couldn't be there uh but i hope you're well and i wish you the best of luck in your next fight against brown tree bring it home um, I just wanted to ask you a few questions. The first question I wanted to ask you um, is to do with the judges. They gave a 10-8 to the first round in Dustin Poirier's favour. Do you think the judges are giving out 10-8 rounds as easy as that these days? I don't know. I, I feel that a lot of a lot of fighters especially feel that the judging should be done by ex-fighters who actually have experience in particular things because there's always going to be bias for a judge for certain things uh, one judge i think there should be like a universal system like there should be everyone should be scoring off the same thing not done by like if someone one judge could think that takedowns are more effective whereas another one may think forward pressure whereas another one may think striking like if you look at if you think about forward pressure like for example in sean o'malley he was on the back foot the whole fight so if you're judging by cage control technically he was being walked down the whole time yeah. but he was landing all shots so but then another judge would do you know what i mean like so d- different judges are scoring things based on different things and to score a 10 8 round i think it needs to be a complete ass whooping and it really wasn't it was. like you know had some shots landed but mcgregor was still firing elbows mm-hmm, from the bottom mm-hmm. you know, he landed some good shots from the from um from the stand-up it's like they completely forget what you know what was happening earlier on in the round, and they just look at oh okay, uh, he was landing loads of ground and pound on the floor. Just because a guy was landing a load of ground and pound, you're completely dismissing everything else that happened in the pre round. So uh, yeah, I think ten eight is a bit steep. I think ten nine would have been would have been uh, right to call. I mean, yeah, you could say it was very dominant uh, at the end, but come on, the only reason why they ended up on the floor is because McGregor went for a guillotine. Yeah. It's not as if you know. 
Poirier, I mean, you know, maybe he would have got the takedown. Who knows? But, you know, at the end of the day, if he would have got a takedown and landed loads of ground and pound and, and McGregor would have been very wobbly, then I would say oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But, and yeah, they, I, I think personally they're giving out too easily. And even then, they're giving they're giving the wrong people the 10-9 score on, on, on certain cards as well just because of forward pressure. Yeah. And it seems as though significant strikes are not such a big factor to these judges, which I think, in my opinion, needs to be changed because, mm. yeah, you could be walking forward, but if you're getting blasted with shots, how is that, you know, how is that you winning a round? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So being evasive and you're able to get out of the way of shots, like, you know, so, uh, yeah, I, I think in, in, in general, the scoring system probably needs to be revised. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. the last one, just for this card, I guess, what do you think would be next for McGregor, for example? Mm. Um, especially after, uh, 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 could we say it's embarrassing? I guess when you say you're going to do something to a guy and then you sort of fulfill exactly what you said you're going to do to someone else yourself, you know, <laughs> <laughs> what do you do next after yeah. this? Um, I think the aura of Mystic Mac has sort of diminished slightly uh, in terms of, you know, I think he used to beat people a lot of the times before he even stepped into the cage. Yes. Now he's not got that same power anymore. So Figured obviously, he, yeah, he, he he's still a, an extremely skilled fighter. He's still one of the best fighters in the world. But to have a full fight against Poirier, I think is pointless mm. because realistically, you I don't know. I don't know. To me, it seemed a bit delusional to think that he was piecing up Poirier with the boxing. Uh, it's not how I saw it. You know, although he did land some nice shots, Poirier was landing also some nice shots with the boxing. You know, Poirier seems to have a more all-rounded uh, skill set as well. You know, he's a very good black belt as well. Yeah. Um, had the wherewithal to actually jump over because you know that guillotine. You know, it would have been it would have been on had he not jumped over. Mm. And, you know, it was a, it was crazy that he was obviously up against the cage and he still managed to get to the other side. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I think McGregor from here. He'll probably have to maybe a Diaz trilogy. I think that will probably yeah. be a good move. Uh, that's definitely a winnable fight for McGregor as well. Uh, you know, obviously everyone's been questioning his cardio, but I think he probably would have, uh, you know, corrected that error mm. by now. Uh, after you know all the training, he, he's. I've said this before in an interview where he's been one of those guys who have been the best at, you know, adjusting once he's made a mistake mm. or where he's lost the fight he's been able to make the appropriate adjustments mm. in the next fight or the other things to, to be able to come back and to come back better so um in that regard you know but the top guys like Oliveira obviously you know Poirier um mm. who are, I mean Chandler and even you know you got you, know, you you got some really good guys in that division so it, it's it's a very talent stacked division he almost right. has to go out and prove himself again uh, can he do it? Of course he can. Mm. Of course he can. Uh, he's still an incredible fighter. Um, it's just a case of, you know, like I say, will he be able to... He will take the rehab very seriously. Mm. I think now he's on a mind frame. Before, he's already, he's already got a lot of money. Yeah. He's already, you know, gone... You know, but now he's... I think he seems to be back into the competitive spirit yeah. again. So I think that side of McGregor will come back. I think a lot of people are counting him out, which I think is a bit a bit harsh to do. Uh, especially just so early it's not like you know like the fight was going pretty you know even back and forth mm. and like I said it he really injured his foot early to, to go for that guillotine and stay on the floor you know had his leg been okay uh, would have things went a bit differently mm. so there's you know the other thing I think he can still compete with the best guys in the world but realistically I think maybe a Diaz trilogy would be the best look for him uh, if it is a six to seven month recovery then you know by next year, he would, he would definitely be able to 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 make that fight, and it would still be very entertaining, and people will love it. Mm. And obviously, the build would be great as well. Yeah, with uh, Gregor back into in back into his old ways, so uh, there's still a lot of options for him. But mm. in terms of title contention, he still has to have a couple of fights before he gets there. I reckon. Yeah, a bit more about you then. As, as let's move on from all things UFC two six four. How did you get into the sport, and what are your inspirations? in the UFC? Yeah, so um, basically when I was five, so my dad was actually a fighter previously. He was an ex-Soviet Union, no holes barred heavyweight champion. So you don't want to mess with that guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Blimey. Do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
choice, mate. You better fucking do it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Obviously, you get a slap around the head. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so, obviously, him being involved in martial arts and stuff like that. So, I was actually born in Lithuania. Mm-hmm. Uh, the very extended name comes from. Um, and then uh, we moved here when I was three years mm-hmm. old. So, technically, I am Lithuanian blood. I've still got a Lithuanian passport. However, obviously, I've been living here pretty much my whole life. Mm-hmm. Uh, why the British accent is uh, yeah, insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can definitely tell. Yeah, yeah so, um, um, but yeah, so when I was five years old, uh, my dad just started basically, oh, look, look at this cool kick or look at this punch. And, you know, when you're a kid, you just think everything's fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like anything that looks a bit weird or different or, you know, you think, oh, well, that's cool. And then literally about two weeks later, it's like, okay, we must get serious now. I'm like, oh, great. Here we go. Now, nah, nah, nah. You're mad uh, now. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 proper. <laughs> so I, I just remember loads of vivid memories of, you know, me sitting in the, in the, uh, like, waiting in the sitting room or up in my in, up in my room. And my dad says, all right, we're training at this time. And you're, you just come home from school. All you want to do, you see your mates outside playing football or whatever, and you're indoors getting ready to, for, for your dad to pretty much shout at you for two hours training because everything has to be done perfectly. And, and you know, and uh, yeah, that, so it was some very, very harsh beginnings. Mm. But uh, at the time when I was a kid, I, I hated it. Like, mm. obviously, I like the sport and, you know, I like com- and even competing and stuff like that, almost because I was forced into it, really, you could say. Mm. Um, but I'm actually very thankful that my dad did do that because it instilled a lot of key values that mm-hmm. I bring with myself, mm-hmm. such as discipline, you know, determination, hard work, and even just having the mindset to be able to, to go out into a fighting situation and be more okay with dealing with the nerves. Yeah. Because if you do it from days and you're automatically, and you know, it just made me better at all my sporting career, you know, later on in life. So I started doing kickboxing, I uh, became a full-time British kickboxing champion. Uh, so that was my main sort of forte, I guess you say, when I was younger. Um, even the last title that I won, I wasn't even, I stopped training hard in martial arts when I was about 11, pursued a bit of tennis. Tennis didn't go, go, go so good. You know, I started hitting the, hitting the gym and everything. And the next thing you know, I'm bloody hitting it out all the time. You know, I, I don't know if it's good for the arms or just the technique or what it was. But, you know, I, I played to an all right level, like, you know, sort of county level, but that not, nothing great. Uh, then I moved on to basketball, uh, and then uh, that's it. That's where I ended up, you know, spending mo- most of my time training with that. But like I say, the last title that I won was when I was fourteen, and I wasn't even. I, I basically just did like a training camp just to train, mm-hmm. ready for that fight. But I was still training for basketball, so uh-huh. you know, it's show that I had I had a sort of talent, like an underlying talent. Like even then, I'll, I'll be playing basketball, and you know, I played at a very good level, yeah. but at the same time. I'm bringing home all these massive trophies from kickboxing and yeah, I'm playing basketball. <laughs> so it's a bit like sort of like to people like, well, like what the hell's going on? Like, sure, you should be concentrating on martial arts, but I ended up going to America. Um, mm-hmm. I've also forgot to, forgot to mention. So when I was younger, I also did Sambo and I ended up competing in judo. Oh, so you know, I've had a lot of, you know, martial arts background, like training and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, Athletic, very uh, athletic. Mm. I've got... Um, I got a blue belt with at the time is is different judo. We were allowed to do leg attacks and stuff like that. I used to get my ass whooped when I was like like when I just started it because because I was so heavy, uh, but I was very young. I'd always fight guys that were three three you know three years younger, four years uh, sorry, three four years older than me, mm. and then they'll be stronger, so I'd have no chance pretty much. Yeah. They'll just be on strength. But then as you know, time got on and I started competing more and more, that's where I started getting the gold medals and stuff like that because then it was a lot more of an even playing field, yeah. if uh, if you will. So, yeah. you know... Uh, I mean, it's, it's, be- so- it's better for you than that, that sort of situation. It might be a little bit worse for them because, you know, you're, you're getting better, you're training up, you know, you're grinding your teeth against the hardest stone. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Uh, you know, for, for me, I've, I've always had to battle through adversity mm. in terms of and older guys like and and we're fighting bigger heavier lads because i was always tall and heavy right. and you know same weight class but i'm a lot younger so i'm a bit underdeveloped and stuff like that so it was it was good to have have those sort of things um so yeah anyways when i was 16 went to america uh i played basketball uh, for two years i played american football out there as well um i wanted to get a scholarship and you know my goal at that time was being in the nba and stuff like, or at least play in europe uh, I got a division two and a division three school that was scouting me, but nothing massive. Mm. Uh, I 
reckon if I can, I stopped playing American football halfway through the season because it overlapped with the basketball season. Right. Uh, I reckon if I would have continued playing American football, I might have got a college scholarship there because it seemed that I had, obviously a contact sport, I had a bit of talent for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I ended up not pursuing it after that, but still I had a great experience. You know, uh, American life is very different to British life. Yeah. Uh, they don't understand his sarcasm. I literally <laughs> had to plug people when I'll be making a joke. They'll literally take me seriously when I say stuff. Oh. It's, a bit, it's a bit of a ball ache. Like, and it's funny because you're trying to be funny by saying something sarcastic. They take you literally <laughs> and then they're joking about you, what you said that was sarcastic that they thought was literal. And I'm just sitting there like, you realise I'm the one making the joke, <laughs> not you guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's a bit, it's a bit of a funny... Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a fun out there but at 18 years old mm. you know either i go to college or university out there yeah. you go for four years you're going to be in massive debt mm. you're not going there for a scholarship but you could walk on um or my dad basically said on the phone you can either come home and start your mma career go and get a job uh and let's and let's pursue this full time so uh pretty much at 18 is when i just went fully delved uh back into mma and uh i've, I've never looked back since then but i'm very glad that i've had Experiences from the previous sports to help with my athleticism yeah. and, and my, uh, you know, later on. So, and even one thing that I've I've mentioned to other people is that, and not many people know how to do Olympic lifts, like you know, clean and jerk mm. with the bar and power cleans and and stuff like that. Like in America, they had everything like that down to a T. I'm talking at 16, 17, 18 years old. These guys are freaking power cleaning 100 kgs and 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 stuff like that. And you're you're thinking like how the hell is this even possible? Like, do you know what I mean? But this is the sort of mentality, like who's the biggest, the strongest and, yeah. and, and stuff. I'm glad that I was able to learn all the techniques of those things, which wouldn't have been taught to me in England. No, so no. it helped add those, you know, add those certain things. So yeah, mate, I've had a very crazy journey so far. And uh, like an I said, exciting I'm, I'm, journey. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Very looking forward to obviously to, to what the future brings as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, skill sets, you know, from, from various sports transcend quite quite well. And, you know, another example of that was you look at Jose Aldo's career and the fact he started off kicking football and, you know, then went into MMA. And that, 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 that skill set alone helped him transcend and, you know, really nail the technique in terms yeah. of, you know, kicking someone's legs. Yeah. And that, so. <laughs> even Greg Hardy, we saw on the weekend, he's an American footballer as well. Um, yeah. Before stepping in UFC. So, yeah, it's... It, it does pay well to, to be a player. Doesn't mean you're going to be the best straight away. Yeah, he got but, knocked out. You know, you, yeah. you got you got to, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to, you know work towards things, but still, yeah, cool. yeah. How it works. exactly. But um, but look, it, look, what was it like when you got signed for the UFC? Right. So this happened mm. for you um back in well, it sort of last year was when your, your debut, wasn't it? Mm. Um, yeah. So man, time goes so quickly, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's mad to think that I won the the cage warriors title now two years ago yeah. like it even sort of like pop up on my memories and everything and I'm like and it was almost brings me back to that same day and I'm just like bloody hell it seems so far away now when when you know like at the time it's like such a big thing and now it's like almost like in the past there like you you, you've was forgotten about it do you know what I mean <laughs> um, yeah so when I won the belt um I got signed by Iridium Sports Agency, which amazing sports agency. I think they're 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 at the top of the at the top of the game in what they do. Um, they're an American company as well. Um, so at that point, we already thought we had a good chance of getting to the UFC because they had already heard about me, they'd liked me, but uh, we weren't sure. Like if there was a dropout, we definitely would have been able to to, to step in or sort of last minute. Uh, but then it got to a point where I got very. Uh, I don't know, like, I just wanted to fight, man. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't like sitting on the sidelines, you know, on the title in June. It's like, then what? Like, I want to fight in August. I want to fight, you know, I wanted to fight straight away. I didn't I didn't want to wait around. Mm. Uh, and it ended up being actually quite a long layoff before I then actually fought again. You know, I fought in, uh, I fought in, uh, I believe it was June. And then I fought the next time in, in, in November. Uh, so, yeah, it, it got to a point where, you know, the Copenhagen card was one that we're looking to maybe step in if anyone pulled out. Uh, unfortunately, you know, or fortunately, like for the athletes, everyone, no one got injured and everything was all good. But unfortunately for me, uh, there was no spots for me to fill. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, my, my manager goes, you can either wait 
or uh, and wait for another opening because we could definitely be able to get you or you can have another fight and I was like fuck it let's get another fight like I, I really I really don't want to be sitting around I want to and I wanted to prove myself it's like everyone thought oh yeah he won, he won the fourth round and this and that you know I wanted to really solidify myself as the champion mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I even said in the pre form of my title defense I said you're not really a champion until you defend no, your belt yeah, yeah. so uh that's why I thought, you know what, let's make it really solidified yeah. that I won this title and it is someone else's. Mm. Uh, and get my name out there a little bit more. Cage Warriors only really started promoting me when I won the title. Mm. There was absolutely no promotion for me beforehand. So uh, it was nice. <laughs> and I mean, listen, the first time I fought on the main card was for my title defense, right. which I mad i was literally on the prelims the whole time but oh yeah that's uh, right because you on the night of champions wasn't it i think the yeah i remember being there and because they 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 tried to do a little bit like um what, what bellator did that time where they put a big card where they had one title fight headline the prelims wasn't that right yeah that was my yeah fight. that's yeah. right yeah, no, yeah. you know uh it, it it was uh so and and crazy enough i'd film take me out in in november of 2018 and then it only aired a year later which was actually coincidentally right before my title defense so it was great great <laughs> pr <Yeah. laughs> they just they just filmed uh they, they just aired uh take me out and then i think about two weeks later i fought fought for the title defense so it's like it was perfect timing nice. in terms of oh yeah, take me out thing and then oh our champion was on Take Me Out and now he's defending his title. So <laughs> it looked like it was all like within a matter of weeks, right? But the stars aligned. Yeah. The stars aligned. Yeah, exactly. So it, it worked out really well. Um, it worked out really well in, in that sense. So then, you know, I'll go on and win, and win the title. And there was a lot of questions. Like at that point, I'm like, I just want to fight again. I don't want to be sitting around it. You know, we got, it got to like New Year's or I think it got to like, just like Christmas. I was still training. I was in shape. I was getting ready to go. And my manager just said, yeah, just stay in shape. Like, listen, we're, we're, we might like, you know, I'm going to have a chat with the matchmakers. We'll see where their heads are at, you know, we but it looked like at that point, we were going to go to contender series, mm, which, oh, right. again, well, you know, that's, a, that's, that's your into the UFC. Mm. Anyways, I'll take that. If I have to do contender series, so be it. And then uh, I think it must have been like the 4th or 5th of January. Uh, I got a phone call. So obviously the time difference between here and America is, you know, I think about seven or seven hours or something. So I woke up for my for, for my mid-morning piss. You know, you, 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 you wait, wait, wake up to go to the toilet. And then the next thing you start, I was like about four missed calls from my manager and, and, a, and a message saying, listen, whenever you get this, can you, can you call me back? And I was like... And at that point, I didn't think nothing of it, but I just thought, bloody hell, like, you know, like he's never really done that before. Uh, but I thought, okay, think didn't even suspect anything. I was like, yeah, sure, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick up. I thought, oh, maybe you got me contender series or something or, or, or whatever. Uh, and then um, and then I wasn't even going to call him at that time, but I thought, listen, I'm up anyways. Let's let's see what let's see what's up. Yeah, and then yeah, I get yeah. I, I, I I call him and, and he goes, oh, how, how you doing, mate? I'm like, yeah, I'm not too bad. I mean. You know, it's it's three in the morning, four in the morning. Uh, feeling a bit drowsy here, but other than that, you know, I'm I'm, I'm all good. So, what's what's up? What's going on? He goes, um, I got I got some news for you. I'm going, well, what's that? He goes, how do you feel about fighting in the UFC? And I was like, no way. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like you're joking? Are you like are you being for real? And he was like, yeah, man, you 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 just got signed by the UFC. I'm like, no. Get in. Like, did you? <laughs> Sitting there, like, like, li 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 literally, just thinking, what is going on? Like, is 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 this actually happening? And then, uh, and then, yeah, he explained to me that you know they had a chat with the matchmaker, and you know he just thought, you know, what? I like this kid. Let's mm. just sign him now instead of waiting for another fight or contender series. He just wanted to sign me straight away and see see how good I was, really. Mm. And then, uh, and then, yeah, I, like my dad ended up being awake as well. Uh, I told him straight away. He, he had like a literally the biggest grin, like a Cheshire cat, literally from <laughs> ear to ear. His, but, but uh, again, he goes, "Okay, good. Now we train harder." <laughs> <laughs> if it, it's like if, if 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 I was in that shoes, I'd probably want to go out and get absolutely shit faced straight away and be like, "Yes, I'm finally signed Celebrate. to the UFC." Celebrate. Whereas for you, a little bit different. It'd be like, "No, we we train harder." <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, uh, it, it was it was quite. Uh, it, it, it was is emotional, but 
I think it was a di- it was a different type of emotional because it was more like obviously I've been visualizing it, I've been speaking it, I, I was I, I, I've been speaking that I want to be in the UFC. I called for it after my last fight yeah, and everything, yeah, and then yeah. it's but we already knew this is where we wanted to be. This was the next logical step. This is where the actual real start mm. of the journey is mm. actually being in the UFC fighting for the top promotion in the world. So, but we knew that was the next logical step. So we already prepared for that. It's not like it was a complete, as much as it was like a massive surprise that it happened at that time, it wasn't a surprise that it was going to happen. Mm, if you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. So, we, we already knew that that was the next step. We knew that we had to get, you know, we had to train to a certain level and, and do things in a certain way. So we were just happy because this is what I've been working for, like, you know, since I started my, I've had so many ups and downs and to prove so many people wrong leading up to that point, a lot of people didn't think I was going to even get into the mm. UFC. So for me to prove those people wrong, that, that, that was a, that was a good feeling in itself, but we knew that, okay, now, now we have to really go and prove ourselves. So, uh, it was an amazing call. It was an amazing moment. And yeah, literally I couldn't go to sleep after that one. I was, I was literally already like ecstatic already when they got the contract sent through and everything like it was, uh, it, it all, it all just happened. And, but for me at that point, I was just like, okay, so when's my first fight going to be? Am I going to fight? Like, like well, what's going on? And, uh, yeah, so it was an amazing, definitely an, uh, an amazing time for me. Nice. I mean, you, you've, you've explained it so well, I'm not going to lie. Which moves us on to then um, the next question. As a fan of MMA, what was your favourite fight to watch? Ooh. Do you know what? I really enjoyed the uh, R- Robbie Lawler and uh, Rory oh. McDonald fight. I thought that was an absolute banger of a fight uh, literally just an absolute war they were going at it you didn't know who was going to win they got both got rocked with shots and and stuff like that i remember watching that live that to this day that, that was one of one of my favorite fights and actually to add on to that uh another fight i don't know if it was actually on the same card because i, I remember watching two fights but i can't remember i don't i don't i'm not sure if it was on the same card but uh Gustafson and uh nah, it wasn't on the same card actually sorry uh but uh Gustafson and John Jones the first fight yes. that's another oh, that's, yeah I think was probably one of the most memorable for me again I, I, I love the you know like the fact that he he may have it was like quite even into the last round then he showed his championship heart and won and won the fight at the end of it that's mm. what made me pretty much the, uh, I was already a fan of John Jones at that point yeah, but that yeah. made me even of his that that he was able to you know weather the storm and and uh and, and come out victorious so those two fights in particular stick out to me um ability being to dig deep right entertaining, yeah entertaining and memorable fights mm. for sure oh that's a that's a solid pick <clears throat> i mean yeah the, the robbie lawler versus rory mcdonald fight i think was in probably both of our top fives i say so. time was it yeah I'll yeah say so yeah so we done that video and yeah it's this no brainer, really. All of ours, even Ash as well. For example, now he, yeah. he absolutely loved that too. Um, it was just yeah, that moment in the octagon where they stood completely bloodied up, right? Oh, iconic! Toe, and they just like stared each other in the eyes, and it was just like the whole yeah. the whole arena was just like in uproar. Just like what, man, I must have been like with that fight live as well, oh. like the freaking going at it. Then Robbie Lawler with his lip hanging off of his face, <laughs> DNA all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> And, and do you know what the thing is it's like at that point I'm like just don't smile Robbie man just don't yeah. scream don't smile uh-huh. every time you here, do you know what I mean it's like, and then yeah but Rory Rory, uh, Rory looked oh he, he looked battered after that fight and uh, yeah his nose was completely broken mm. it's funny so many memes that came out after that so you want to be a fighter <laughs> and you just got, uh, after I think it must have been third round or something just all bloodied up nose broken yeah and all that so yeah some so M- mma in the ufc that they've had some really memorable fights and i know there's going to be plenty more to come for sure yeah oh no yeah. absolutely yeah that's it 100 cool. percent. um uh, j- just another one here from from ash of course so uh like i said he couldn't make it here today but he did have some questions he wanted to sort of get out there your usc debut uh was at fight island one last year uh and what a debut it was uh fight of the night and you also became the first Lithuanian to win in the UFC. Fair play to you, mate. Uh, you, you put on a decent striking um, battle. In fact, the way you finished that was exactly the way you finished Ricardo at UFC 111. And that's also where we met, which uh, where we had that picture I tweeted you about. 
Uh, where was your head uh, after that win? In all honesty, I was ready, getting ready for the second round. I'm like, okay. Uh, so, you know, we, we ended it on a good note. Mm. So let's, let's get ready for the round to like really put it on him. And then uh, next thing you know, the referee calls it off. It was at that moment, it's like there was a bit of stress, a bit of like, what's going yeah. on? And then release. It was almost like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, we, we did it. We did it. We, we won our debut, you know, of, of this first, the most money I've ever made in MMA in my whole mm. life. So it was, uh, and obviously then with the with the bonus even more so um mm. but then uh i'm not gonna lie as the days went on and you know you look at sometimes this is why looking at comments and looking at other people's things and stuff like that isn't a good thing because then there ended up being so much controversy around it and i know it's just people just like being sore losers afterwards mm. but it's like you know at the end of the day I, i'm hitting in the correct target it's the referee's job to see what is going on? Like, like apparently, uh, you know, you had other referees like saying, "Oh no, you need to do an instant replay." But he's the one that's in the cage. Like, yeah. he's the one that can. I mean, if I was doing illegal shots, and okay, there's other guys who have landed maybe one or two illegal shots, but the rest of them have been legal and they finished the fight, mm. and it's okay for them. Mm. But for me, there was a massive controversy saying, "Oh, they're all back of the head, back of the head." But then you saw a bruise in the so, correct yeah. spot where, yeah, exactly. Like, it, it, close up that it was in the if it was in the back i'll, I'll say do you know what uh, that was my mistake but it was in the correct spot like you saw a massive red mark yeah. in the correct zone like we even went through it beh uh, behind the scenes uh, with the referee uh, um uh before the fight so i knew that those are the right me and my dad have been practicing that mm. stuff it's not like we just uh, pray and hope yeah let's just hope these things land like no we we knew like you can't keep your head there it's gonna it's, you know you you're gonna get your shots landed and it's at the end of the round my dad goes elbows 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 i'm like i ain't gonna sit and wait around here and wait for him to try and get a take now <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna try to crap out of it yeah. so no, exactly and um, of course if, if he turns his head into it then that's very much his him him like that's not how you defend yourself you don't turn the back yeah. of your head into the into the danger zone um, but he, he, you, you did um, finish it the same way you finished Ricardo at uh, no Cage Warriors one eleven as well, like that the yeah. same move. And I was just like, man, that, that's just so great to see it. Yeah, devastating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I thought of my move move after that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, no, it, it was great that it, it was almost weird that it happened exa in exactly the same way. But but again, it should tell people that I'm you know I'm well versed at using those elbows. Mm. I'm well versed at particular moves. So you know the fact that there was controversy about him falling out the cage. And and then Bisping sort of like you know he, he sort of backed him up saying oh yeah well like you know sometimes you want to sit on the case to be able to get back up to yeah. your feet and like 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 you know I, like I can like I respect Bisping and I love Bisping but but you know to say that he wanted to to sit back on the cage to get you shouldn't be having to do that yeah no it, you should be straight up you should be going straight up yeah, yeah. exactly you've only one minute to 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 get yourself ready for the next one the, the referee's telling you a million times get back up to your feet and he's not doing mm -hmm. it and he wants to yeah. pull back and at the end of the day he he wasn't fit to fight he would not be able to have made it into the second round anyway yeah. so no uh, so i think th that threw a bit of shade on on my debut i'm not gonna lie yeah. uh the fact that there's a lot of people talking a lot of you know like saying it was back of the head saying this and that and blah 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 but Afterwards, you know, I, I kind of looked at it and I, and this is why I just sort of uh, dismissed it. I was like, look, at the end of the day, I'm the one who got, I wouldn't have got the 50 Gs if I didn't, you know, if, if they didn't think that was an impressive win. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I landed the shots in, in the right area and stuff like that. The referee did his job and, and you know, he stopped the fight when, when it had to. So afterwards, uh, uh, you know, I think the pain lessens when, you know, you got a, you got a massive check going in your bank account. So <laughs> after that. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I was all right. But um, yeah, I, I, I feel that I wish I still would have been able to show more in, in, in my debut anyway. So, but it, it still put me in a good position after that. So yeah, it, 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 it was, it was just surreal being in, in Fight Island, fighting for the UFC, wearing the gloves, wearing like all, all the kit and everything. And, mm. and, and just being, you know, in that moment, like, you know, being in the UFC case, something that you've been working for your whole life. And now you're finally there. Uh, that was what was an amazing feeling. Like, and then going back home, knowing that you're a winner was like one of the, like, honestly, it's, it's yeah. indescribable. Like, going home, feeling good and like, feeling, oh, I'm going to take a week, like take a week to, to, to sort of, uh, you know re just sort of just sit back and just take it all in it was it, it's it's really hard to describe mm -hmm. like it's one of them feelings where 
all your hard work and all your effort. Now you're finally in the UFC and you made a statement. So it, it was it was a lot of feelings that happened. But at that point, I'm like, I just wanted to fight again. Yeah. Me being me, mm. I just wanted to get back in. Yeah. Man, that's it. man, amazing. Sorry about that, putting shade on things. But at the end of the day, yeah, you look at the end of the day, what a result it was. It was a great fight to watch. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Leads on to the, the next question, really, because yeah. your next fight is against Khalil Roundtree, who is also coming off of two straight losses. And it's the last fight on your current contract as well. And it's, so it's an important fight for both of you, nonetheless. But what adjustments have you made for this? Now, you just kind of like referenced, um, you know, your you sort of mindset coming from that last fight. Have you made sort of more, is it scientific based uh, stuff now? Or, or, you know, what what kind of are those adjustments? Added anything potentially new to your game? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, for me, it's not a lack of skill set mm. because wrestle, I, I, I've got good jiu-jitsu and I can strike. Clearly, striking being my forte. So, but it's like, how are you going to use those, like I said, to the best way possible when you're in the cage? So, one big move that I made... Um, which again has no disrespect to the team itself or, or, or because the coaches are absolutely amazing i gained so much knowledge from them and and they helped me get to where i am and, and i'm forever thankful for that but uh, i left team bst and i went to train at team titan and uh, that has been a a, a a solidified move now so i'm i'm with full, uh, full time and um alongside obviously my dad's training and everything so um that's one adjustment that 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 definitely played a massive part because even when I went to the first sparring session, like I think you have to take things, you have to be very selfish in this game. And at the same time, you have to see what can make you improve that next level further. Mm. And I feel, uh, you know, that the, 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 everything that the BST gave me was absolutely amazing and got me to this point. But now I need to add something else, which is going to make me get, level better to use my skill set now in a better way and titan was able to give me that and they have give big been giving me that like if you see the improvement that i've had from the last two months my coaches are, and my dad have already said like you look like a completely different fighter mm -hmm. and for them especially for my dad to say that is a is, is a big deal <laughs> yeah. so yeah, he's been with you from uh, the beginning you know if been, anyone we're in Nothing, you know, nothing really impresses him much. So, you know, for me to get in his good books in that sense uh, uh, is a good thing. So, you know, Mickey Papas, an amazing coach. And the, the level of training partners, uh, you know, although, you know, so they got one guy who's in Bellator and they got, but the guys that have coming up, the guys who are very young, like, that's what you need. Young, hungry, mm -hmm. motivated guys that see me in the UFC and they want to, meet, they want to take my head off. Mm -hmm. But that's a good thing because the sparring sessions are great. We're all trying to help each other. We're all trying to lift each other up. And it's everything that I'm doing, like in terms of going to shoot for takedowns, how to use my moves better. It's, it's now being brought together uh, much better uh, with, with, uh, with my team. And again, it's just things that you can pick up that you, that you realize that you need to add to help evolve your game. And I've definitely done that. And um, another thing is also we've been focusing a bit more on changing the strength and conditioning slightly, not, not, not a hundred percent like, uh, you know, not, not full on, but we have add, like slightly changed it a little bit. And we've added swimming as well. Uh, mm. one set we've, we've become a bit more strategic with how we're planning the sessions, like taking one extra rest uh, in the week, as opposed to just going full out bloody through, through mm. the week and not two sessions a day is hard. Like, you know, and I'm, I'm talking when you're going at hundred percent intensity. So for me to then, you know, change things up slightly and, 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 and adjust it and get the appropriate rest, get the appropriate, you know, so everything now is just being completely tailored to, to, to me. And, and strategy is, is another, yeah. like so many things, like if I'm talking to you now, like to when I actually think back about all the things I've been changing, it's actually a hell of a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. it's a short period but, of time. But, almost. You know what I mean? But these are the adjustments that I knew that had to be made. Um, the strategy is another thing. Uh, we focus even more so on that, like doing the things appropriate for my for my opponent. Obviously, as a fighter, you just have to adapt and overcome whatever's given to you in the fight. But, you know, having a, an appropriate strategy or something to go off of is very important to have the foundation to be able to beat that fighter. Because, yeah, in the crew fight, had he not landed that punch, maybe, you know, I would have adjusted and things would have gone differently. Mm. But at the same time, amazing job. His strategy was 
set in stone yeah. what he wanted to do. He executed it, and that will that's what got him to finish mm-hmm. earlier on in the rounds. So, uh, that this is the same with me. I'm I'm now learning to execute things, and you know the, the, my training partners are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mindset's in a good place. I'm 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 thinking more again, just just completely delving into the fight, looking more at, at fight footage and. I just feel like in a very in a very good place. I feel in really good shape. Wow. I feel my cardio is improving. Um, things are a lot more regimented uh, in terms of it, nothing much is changing. Yeah. Like going to do different things or going to different clubs. I'm keep, keeping everything strategic on on how I'm doing that. So mm-hmm. uh, there's a uh, if if you will. So and and we're drilling the same moves constantly that is what's going to get you to be a perfectionist yeah. at these moves yeah yeah this is it's like uh, there's a saying um i think it's don't fear the guy that knows a thousand kicks fear the guy that knows one kick and has practiced it a thousand times <laughs> oh wow yeah strong absolute inspiration yeah. hit the nail right there so you know it, it, these these are the things uh these are the things that are going to make me a better fighter and mm. and uh, uh it's clearly shown for me already and I've still got another eight weeks. So it's very exciting to see the improvements till that point as well. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's exciting. I mean, yeah. I, I want to touch back on, um, I think I've got a, a podcast I listened to, I think it was Joe Rogan with John Danaher. And they were saying uh, in the jujitsu game, sometimes like the purple belts will want to kind of roll with the, the guys that are kind of lower down in the rank with them just so that they can practice new techniques and try and get things off. Because if they, if they try new things with black belts, it's it's not necessarily going to work. So therefore, you're not exactly developing anything into your, into your game. Yeah, you've got to be more confident at doing at doing things on you know I guess you could say lesser opponents. Mm-hmm. So you have the confidence to go and do it because then when you have the confidence to then go and do those against the black belt, you'll most likely be able. Obviously, they'll be able to de- they'll be, they'll try and defend mm-hmm. it, but you have more luck the higher likelihood of executing it because you have that confidence of being able to to do it again you can do it on one and one opponent and then you'll be able to do it on another yeah. so uh you know uh it, it definitely the, the, those things are uh it's it's this, this game has so many different things that goes into it which is why it is very crazy to see that most people don't respect mma as much as i think that it should mm. a lot respect football players basketball players nfl players mm. in terms of the professional athlete label i guess you could mm. say but when it comes to an mma fighter it's like oh yeah well w- w- when they train and when they fight they don't understand there's a hell of a lot of pressures that goes yeah. into fighting as well and probably even more so because you're actually there's a fear of getting injured and hurt where these other athletes don't have but we you know i think slowly but surely the athletic side of mma will be a lot more appreciated mm. by people but the fan base is continually growing yeah. so um yeah man but it's it's a never-ending learning experience in the game and uh I'm, I'm i'm very happy to be you know delving right in you know jumping in head first in all of this mm-hmm. i feel like everywhere i've went i've had to learn on the job which is a bit shit sometimes because you know, having losses when, you know, you shouldn't have had those losses and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's very annoying. But um, at the same time, every you've noticed every time I've stepped up a level, I've had to take some le- learning curves. Yeah. I had to take yeah. some lessons. And then I've come back, I've, I've figured out where I've went wrong and applied it and I went on these win streaks. And I feel like I've been given two very tough opponents very early in my <laughs> UFC career. Guys that no one else wanted to fight. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to go out and, and, and fight these guys and try and show myself. Now, I know you could say I'm also taking another tough opponent. Khalil Roundtree is no, you know, is no, is no, uh, um, wash, uh, you know, yeah. is, is, is no scrub by yeah. any means. You know, a very talented, very dangerous fighter. So uh, I'm never backing down from no challenge. But mm. I feel that now I'm at the level to to really sharpen my skill set uh, to the best of my ability. And I'm really just looking forward to it, uh, especially fighting in, in front of my hometown. Yeah. is going to be uh, a deal for me. Well, yeah, we can't oh, wait. Yeah. I mean, oh, wow, that's oh, amazing. Let's get into that last question. And let's say um, yeah, this well. one is, 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 from, is from Ash. Just once again, wanting to ask another question. We've seen you bounce back from two straight losses in the past. And what came after that was a succession of wins. What can we expect from you in the future? I think you can expect exactly the same. Uh, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, 
my back is up against so a good friend uh, has told me uh Denison Sutherland for for those uh, for those who know him uh pioneer of UK MMA good friend of mine um was a training partner for many years um and still a very good friend to this day he's t- I remember we had a phone call and he said to me he said listen Modesto's went no, notoriously when your back has been up against the wall that is when you you perform mm. at your best mm. and I feel my back is definitely up on is definitely on the wall this is the last fight on my UFC contract this is a must win uh, you know it is in my hometown um, and this is where I feel I'm going to shine this is where I'm going to provide my, 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 my best performance and then in the future you're going to see a, an even more elevated game like I said I've through every loss and everything that happens a bit, every bit of adversity that I face, there's always something, like you said, always a silver line. There's mm. always something I'm learning from it. There's always something I'm taking from it to go and push myself forward in the future. If you ain't learning from shit, you're just going to keep insanity is doing the same thing over and over mm. again, expecting different results. So it. the fact that I'm changing things that definitely needed to be changed and, and, and working on certain aspects of my game and, and stuff like that to, to better myself. And obviously the other guy's going to be doing the same mm. thing. I, I noticed that, but I have full confidence in myself and my ability to become a world champion. That is the goal. That is where I'm aiming for. That is what I'm visualizing. That's what I'm going to do. You know, there, there's many fighters in the world, but I do believe I'm a special talent. And uh, all I have to do is just be able to put the pieces of the jigsaw together in, mm. in the right mm. way. And uh, I haven't been able to do so in my last couple of fights, but trust me and believe me that I will do from this fight onwards uh, there, there, there's going to be a, a hell of a lot of violence that I'll be able to put onto people and I'm becoming more mature in my mind yeah. more mature in my skill set so it's only going to show now in future fights now we're going to go move into the sort of the game aspect of it yes. okay? okay very quickly and this game is called guess the referee now I'm going to act out some signature moves from referees and you're going to guess which referee it is right okay. do you reckon you oh do that oh my god Difficult. This <laughs> it's, is difficult. It's gonna be fun. Jordan, you're gonna go get in the position. Right, I'm gonna get in position. And then uh this is if you watch UFC, you, you'll notice that these are sort of typical behaviors or gimmick behaviors that these referees have. It's like you you'll know it. You'll be like, ah, oh, I know who that guy is. I, of course. Okay, gone. Right. There we go. Now we can see him. Uh yes, sir. Okay, right. We're ready. Who is that? Steve Mazzagotti. Steve Mazzagotti. Yes! Yes. Yes. Right. yes. Second yes. one. Here we go. Next one up. Yamasaki. He says Yamasaki. Yes! <laughs> oh, All right. Next one. Here we go. Here we go. <sighs> Hub D. Yes! Hub D. Hub D. <laughs> That's Herzog. Yes, that's Herzog. He's got it. He's got it. Absolutely. It. Absolutely. Yeah, that was amazing. That was actually pretty decent. But um... it, it, it's, cra- it's crazy that, uh, do you know what, that those referees have such like clear and evident mannerisms yeah. Yeah. that like, you know, that, that you were able to highlight it so easily. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, we didn't have a, a prize, did we? We should have probably had a prize for like <laughs> getting all of them right. And you nailed it. You actually yeah. did better than I thought you would. <laughs> UFC 265 is around the corner. Um, and now, of course, there's been lots of conversation there around um, who's going to be taking 265. Was it going to be Francis Ngannou? Was it going to be against uh, Derek Lewis? We had all hoped for it. But what actually come out in recent news, of course, is Garn is stepping up and going to be fighting for the interim title against Derek Lewis, um, UFC 265. So mm-hmm. what's your what's your predictions on it? I mean, how do you think it's going to play out? Do you think someone's going to have a clear advantage? Do you think uh, it's going to go one way or the other? And um, how are you calling it? What round if it is if it doesn't go to decision? Yeah. So, I mean, Cyril Gain has uh, gone, sorry. Uh, I think he's got a lot better movement. Uh, he's a sw- He seems to switch stances a bit. He's got more variety of strikes. Uh, he does throw a lot of kicks as well. Uh, not much has been seen about his wrestling, uh, so I'm not too mm. sure about that. But I feel he will have the upper hand in terms of technical striking, mm. um, being able to land more shots. So if anything, I think if he would win, it would be probably over the course of three rounds, just doing the same as what he's done previously. Uh, sorry, five rounds. Um, but 
Derek Lewis is known to have that one bomb power that, you know, that crazy, like, you know, steamrolling truck shot that can come out of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? So in all honesty, I feel if it goes to decision, I reckon Garn will probably take it because tactically he'll fight the correct fight in order just to get the points in, get the shots landed. Um, uh, uh, but if it was to win by stoppage, it, I think Lewis would have it by knockout because mm. he lands one of those 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 big meteoric strikes on anyone. It's going to put anyone mm. down, no matter who it is. I mean, Volkov, massive guy, just freaking tumbled him like like folding up, folding him up like a chair. So you know, um, I think uh, I think that's where that's where Lewis will have the upper hand. It's that that one shot power um, to be able to. If he gets in close range, we've got. I mean, it's a bigger cage, so Garn will have more space to move. Yeah. Garn seems to have like quite decent ground skills as well. So in all the other areas, it seems like Garn maybe has more more of a varied skill set. But uh, I, I feel if Garn wins, it'll be by decision. If Lewis wins, it'll be by knockout. So that's that's what I'll say. Yeah, that's a fair assessment. Uh, Modestus, it's been amazing it has been. for you to to join us for our very first UFC fighter interview on the channel. Oh, um, listen, you guys are great. You guys are great. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, he's like, oh, stop it. Stop it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the compliments coming through now? <laughs> nah, but on, on, honestly, uh, I, I have I had a great time chatting with you a lot. Yeah, you no, guys are really cool guys. Uh, love the questions. Love the love the energy you lot bring. Mm, and yeah, just, just keep it going, man. I, I, know, I know every... I know everything you're doing is gonna is gonna blow up someday. So yeah, just keep up, guys. Thank you so much for having me on as well. Yeah, yeah no it's worries. It's been our pleasure. Yeah, it really has pleasure. been. Um, no, absolutely fantastic. Thanks again. Yeah, just yeah. Give all give right. us a share, retweet all those nonsense. Uh, all that pro, good pro, stuff. That Don't good you stuff. worry. I'll, I'll I'll be bringing out some of my 10.8k followers onto you guys. Yeah? Oh yes, mate. All right, we'll guys. Keep... You lot are amazing. Yeah, have a lovely day. Yeah, yeah? Andrew, take Thanks. care, buddy. We'll uh, we'll oh, see you soon. Appreciate it. All right, take nice care, one, guys. All right, bye, bye. Love. That's fine.